Hello YouTubers, RVers, and fellow hams. Coming to you live from inside the RV today, tonight. It's Sunday evening. I've been working all weekend on the water systems. And uh, talk about that in the footage I shot. Uh, I went around... <clears throat> I went around last night and shot some stuff and talked a bit with the cell phone. I'll try to edit out the shakier parts. Um, but uh, here's that footage. Hey guys. Coming to you from inside the RV. The desk is uh, becoming functional. Doing a little work at it actually today. Um, 3D printer's in here. I was going to use it to print out a terminal strip. It won't actually ride up there, it'll ride down there. Um, or it won't wobble around, but it sits pretty solidly. Today I was working on the water systems and uh, yeah, this is the uh, old, well, there goes part of it. This is the old drain valve from the bottom of the tank. The uh, valve part was broken off. Uh, and you know, actually, I think I saw the guy do that at the dealership when we were walking around it. And he went to turn the valve to make sure it was closed, and I thought I saw it snap. And I asked him, did you just break that? And he actually got a little testy in his voice, I think. He, he kind of said, no, I didn't break it, you know, like like I was insulting him. But yeah, actually he did. <laughs> this valve was froze up, and he went to crank on it, and he, he snapped it. Ah, that's no big deal. You know, this was like four bucks. I bought one at the RV shop. Um, But yeah, I was working on the water today, and uh, there's probably still some suds in the sink. No, they went away. I did run some water through the system, um, ran some fresh water through and then pressurized it with the pump and uh, every fitting under these faucets down below uh, was, was weeping uh, behind this panel here. The uh, fittings for the shower valves were weeping, pardon the uh, uh, pointing of a camera in the bathroom, pardon that, but uh, the fittings under those valves were weeping. Um, those were all hand-tightened, you know, um, things, so that was easy just to crank on those a little bit and stop that. And the drains, too. The drains uh, all uh, were weeping a little bit and had to be tightened up by hand. The uh, connection under the toilet was okay. Uh, so I got all those done, and I figured I was, uh, I was good. And then I remembered, you know, I had... Uh, had uh, switch the bypass valves for the cold water heater which is under here buried behind these ducts and you're not gonna be able to see it can I turn the light on on this no I can't maybe I can find a way to get these out of the way you can kind of see them now there's a, a valve here, a valve here, and a valve there. And this is a bypass for the cold water heater, which is back here. Um, this valve down here, you, know, you can't really see it, but the wood's all wet. This was dripping. And these hose clamps are crimp-on hose clamps that were put on at the factory. They're just a steel ring that was compressed. Um, they're not adjustable. I could probably get a pair of pliers and try to crimp them a little further, but that would just be stupid. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to figure out how to cut them off and replace them with regular hose clamps. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This one up here didn't leak. Yeah, it's dry. And that one's dry. I think it's just this one down here, and I'm hoping it's not the valve. I'm hoping it was just the... Uh, just the fitting, and all I'll have to do is replace those hose clamps. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. Don't have running water yet, doggone it. I got halfway through sanitizing the system. I did the wash cycle with the soap, and I was about to use the sanitizer when I remembered to check this area and uh, found this leak. So, ah. <sighs> Just one thing after, and it's not even, not really convenient working in here because of these heater ducts, and they're just traveling through here. 
I'd have to get inside over here where the heater is to remove that duct. So I'll just find a way of keeping it up out of the way when I work. But that's where I'm at. That's what i got to do tonight yet is uh, replace all those crimp-on hose clamps. And hope I can cut the old ones. Um, man, i got some big diagonal cutters, but I don't know if that's going to work. I might have to just yank them off. I don't know. I'll figure it out. <sighs> it's depressing. I was hoping to spend a few hours doing the water and have running water tonight. That's the only thing keeping me from living in here full time is not having running water. Got some nice blackout curtains up here. These were made for me by uh, my good friend Rhonda. Thank you, Rhonda. Oh, and back there is the the bed. I've been sleeping out here. It's not too bad. Pretty comfortable to sleep. Over there on the night table is a teeny little bitty ceramic heater. I bought that for nine bucks at Walmart. It's 250 watts. I wanted to see if it would make a difference because it gets kind of chilly. Uh, the other night it was 48 degrees outside in the morning and 52 in here when I woke up. My nose was cold. <laughs> um, I ran this little heater last night and it kept it about 10 degrees warmer in here with the uh, barricade shut. It kept it about 10 degrees warmer in the bedroom than it was out in the rest of the coach. So it does make a difference. Had the mag loop hanging up here by the window just trying it out. It's pretty much deaf anywhere inside of here though. The uh, walls and ceiling, I think they have an aluminum layer to them. So it's a Faraday cage. So the mag loop just does not work inside the coach at all. That experiment's a failure. That's my washing machine. Normally it sits in the shower for storage. I move it out here if I'm going to use the shower. It's cool. I'll do a whole video on it. I can do about a third the size load in it that you would do in a normal uh, household washing machine. And I'll be able to run it off the inverter. I'm not level, so there's just a little bit of pink fluid in there from the... Uh, the lines were full of antifreeze when I first flushed them out. Uh, it's just not that didn't drain away. I really need to probably caulk around that drain anyway. It looks like there's a gap. And more stuff to do. Just one thing after another. I keep saying that, but boy, I'm frustrated right now. That leak, uh, that leak from under there where the cold water heater is, is just annoying. If they used regular hose clamps, I could have just tightened them up and I'd have been good. Uh, the desk, though, as long as we're here, um, I have all my test gear in that cubby. Everything's in there. The frequency counter, multimeter, oscilloscope, bench power supply, soldering iron. Uh, and a capacitance meter is also back in there. And I can pull out and use what I need when I need it. This space up here is big enough for the scope to sit in. So I can put the scope up there, the bench supply, and then pull the frequency counter forward if I needed all of them. Uh, up here, I have an outlet strip that's plugged in to shore power. So if I'm plugged in, that's where I'd hook the uh, test gear up to use it. Over on this side, there's going to be another outlet strip there that's going to be hooked to the inverter down below, which will be controlled by this switch here to turn it on. So I'll be able to use the test gear from the solar batteries, which are right now sitting at 13.7 volts. This is the panel. It's pretty much finished. I took some pictures of the inside that I'll uh, show you here in a moment. Um, it lets me control everything. Main battery cutoff, solar panels, or solar charge controller, uh, house battery cutover, um, cooling fan. A 19 volt supply is a failed experiment. Um, that cheap Chinese supply generates all kinds of crazy weird noise. I've tried filtering it, grounding it, and all kinds of stuff but as soon as I hook it up to the laptop it works it'll run the laptop but the audio uh, coming out of the laptop is just terribly noisy and I imagine it's RF noisy too but that's okay I've got a lower power inverter here that I can plug in to charge the laptop with instead of using the big one this uh, at idle uses uh, uses only about one watt whereas the big one uses I forget what it was I don't think it was quite 10 it was six or seven watts 
So I, I can run the laptop off that little inverter as needed down below there. This is where the radios are going to go. I've got the 817 in there now in the Duino Box rig interface. There's a Raspberry Pi back inside of here along with my file server and I can turn them on right here. Turn on the 5 volt regulator. I can turn on the Pi in USB. Um, yeah, there's 5 volts and USB is on. You can see its LED just came on over here. Which right now I just use for the cell phone. Um, this amplifier is directly off the 12 volts. I turn that on. Yeah, nothing hooked up to it. Speakers are Velcroed up there. They sound good. I had the Chromebook in here. I was listening to internet radio streams while I was working. <laughs> uh, so this shelf up here is uh, just sort of a work area for things. Um, like I set the laptop up there or the Chromebook up there if I'm going to listen to music. Uh, I don't know what else I'll do up there. It's just space that I can utilize. It has a barrier so things won't roll off of it. This whole area is closed up when I fold the desk up. And I've got uh, latches for that to keep it up there. And then I've got bungee connections down there. And I slide the chair in against it and against the two supports underneath that I showed you before. And the bungee goes across and keeps that all tight for travel. Uh, and I've still got ample space in here. I'm going to put, uh, well, like i got a tote in here with the miscellaneous tools I use often at the bench. You know, a couple of screwdrivers, pliers, needle nose, tape. You know, the kind of stuff that you use on pretty much every project is in there for quick access. And there's lots of space, and there's a whole bunch of space there I can put stuff in. So it's going to be all parts that I need over there. Um, over here I've got more storage back in here that I've just got this wireless keyboard sitting in right now, but... I can put all kinds of stuff in there. I might put most commonly referenced or required parts, you know, like a box of resistors and capacitors or um, uh, solid state parts. Put totes in there with all those, you know, so I have them readily available. Uh, and then uh, parts that aren't used as often will be stored elsewhere. Like up in these cabinets, I'm going to use these up here for park storage. Like there's a tote up there of coax jumpers already that have ends on them. I'll have another tote that's full of just just raw coax, you know. So all those shelves across there can be part storage. Um, and I'm not even getting into the living space, you know. I mean, it, there's still plenty of storage here. Back there in the bedroom, that wooden cabinet that used to be the foot of the bed has a lot of storage space in it. So I'm going to have my tools and stuff in there, plus more parts. And uh, that won't fill it up. I'll still have place for, like, winter clothes and that. Uh, this dresser up here, um, I've got that closet full of hanging clothes already, and I've got, you know, t-shirts, underwear, socks, stuff like that in those drawers. Um, I almost have all the clothes that I'm bringing with me in there already, and I haven't even touched the cabinets back here in the bedroom. These are hanging closet-type cabinets, too, and these are big storage cabinets, and there's more hanging closet cabinet space there, so... Uh, I'm going to be struggling just to find stuff to store, I think. <laughs> um, food storage, you know, I've got this up here, and there's another one down below the fridge, down there. And then uh, dishes and things. I've got drawers down here, space under the sink. i got cabinets up here that I've already put some dishes in. Actually, I've got pretty much all the dishes I'm going to take with me already loaded in. And I've still got space, you know. And I can put dry goods and foods up here, too. You know, I've got two other big cabinets up here I can load up with canned foods and um, cereals and uh, all kinds of other stuff. And then, of course, the fridge. So I have so much storage in here. And I haven't even touched the uh, cab over storage up there yet. Um, so, yeah, it's, there's so much storage in here. I'm not really going to have enough stuff to fill what I have. So I'm not too worried about that. It's starting to get comfortable. Uh, if I can just get running water. If I could just get running water. Oh, that was that was so frustrating when I found that leak. I thought, okay, the system is working. All I've got to do is finish the sanitization, rinse it out a couple of times, and I can load in fresh water and start living in here full time tonight. You know, for having running water is the only thing that's keeping me from living in here. Um, I still have to get up in the middle of the night and head into the house to use the bathroom. You know, um, so yeah. Oh, it's a mess. Uh, everything's in flux because I'm constantly working on either something on the desk or something on the RV. All the leaks have been taken care of, though. Um, 
we had some pretty heavy rain and then everything was dry in here so that's good got uh, LED light fixtures put in there and oops, sorry about the hand cam on up here uh, that provide most of the light that I need at the evenings you know I'm gonna put one more over in the bedroom area um, but these two give me plenty of light so yeah um, there's a lot more I probably did um, over this last week I just can't remember because it's such a blur I've just been scrambling every day um, getting close though I've been uh, like I said getting things loaded in uh, I still have stuff to do on the desk um, just to get it travel ready some final woodworking and things to install as I think I mentioned in the footage um, and uh, yeah so this week will mostly be about uh, sorting and loading things in from the house uh, this coming week and uh, my hope is that by the end of the week I've got the house uh, pretty much emptied out and uh, I'll be posting uh, on Facebook there were several people that were interested in the remaining parts um, which is going to be quite a bit, the majority of it <laughs> so I'll be posting on Facebook once those are available and hopefully someone can come down and take them off my hands um, I think I've got everything else pretty much covered so uh, if things go exceedingly well and uh, everything is uh, smooth this week uh, next weekend might be my last weekend uh, stationary uh, we'll see so that's your update for this week from a very tired old tech guy I'm beginning to feel the old in my title <laughs> I'm so sore um, working uh, Oh, I didn't uh, give you an update on the water. Uh, I talked about what I had to do with those valves over here. Uh, I replaced four of the clamps with more standard hose clamps. And uh, that took care of the leakages around the uh, hose clamps. Uh, one of the valves, just one of them, is seeping a little through the uh, stem where the... Uh, knob comes out. Uh, it's about one drip per half hour uh, when it's under pressure. So I'm going to have to replace that valve. Um, I can at least use the water now. Uh, I've got running water in here. I, I finished sanitizing and flushing out the whole system, all the tanks. Uh, I've run two full tankfuls of fresh water through uh, some of it, some of it through the system and uh, draining the rest, but I flushed it uh, twice um, more than what they said to do, just to make sure. But still, I'm probably not going to drink uh, the water from that tank until it's had at least two more tankfuls through it down the road. Uh, I've got five one-gallon milk jugs that uh, I've been using for uh, spring water anyway, so I'll use those. They fit right down here under this lower right corner of the desk just fine um, so that'll be my drinking water initially and uh, also my my backup water when I get down to one gallon of, of spare water in the milk jugs that'll be my my indicator that it's time to pack up um, from wherever I'm at camping so uh, yeah that's where we're at this week we're getting really close the desk is uh, getting quite functional um, I was talking on the radio today to some guys locally. Uh, I haven't put the HF antenna up because it's been so thunderstormy. Uh, I might do that this week, though, and play around on HF a little bit. Now, I don't remember if I mentioned in the other footage. I think I did. But um, I ran across a deal that's probably going to enable me getting the ICOM 7300 to put in this empty spot right here. So Hopefully... Um, it won't be by next weekend. It'll probably be the Monday or Tuesday following. I might be tucking a 7300 in here as the last thing I do before I pull out of the driveway. So 73 for this week, and uh, we'll see you in a week. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.